Hey guys, it's Marty with DPC Technology, and we're back today with another video. Today we are going to mount a TV on that big white space over there. So we have a 65 inch TV that we are going to use a flush mount on. I believe it has a little bit of tilt in it, but the point is with a flush mount, it's as close as it can to the wall. We're gonna talk about how to throw the brackets on the back of the TV and kind of some thoughts that you might wanna you know, run through your head before you just slap them on there. Ways to kind of mock it up on the wall and then put the bracket on the wall such that everything is gonna end up just how you want it. As we go through it, we might talk a little bit about things to look out for. Let's get started. All right guys, so we've already uh, started unboxing this television and we've kind of pulled the mount uh, box open and started pulling out some of the parts. There's still gonna be different size screws in all these mounts. You gotta find the ones that work right for your TV. So there is a specific diameter for the size of the TV you need and there is a length that's gonna work for you. That diameter is pretty easy to figure out. Start grabbing screws, threading them in there and see if they'll actually thread. Um, and if you find the ones that thread, then just look at the length that's gonna work. So if I Screw this one all the way in. You see there's still a gap there. This bracket is gonna go in between there, but you see that's, that void is still way too much. At that point, you might have to use one of these little spacers. Another possibility is to just use a different screw, but sometimes you won't find the exact right screw size. So if you find that scenario, one thing we will do is we will use one of these little black spacers like I just mentioned, but we'll do it with a you know very specific purpose. And by that, I mean, I'll put the spacer in between the bracket and the TV so that this bracket stands off the TV a little bit because these newer TVs have a little bit of a curve to them. It kind of helps deal with that. And it also kind of helps deal with being too close to the wall, believe it or not. If we get it all the way up there and it's you know, too far off the wall, we can always pull it back out and do something else. That little bit there is gonna allow us to not have any gap or slack, which obviously we don't want at all. And it gives us just a little extra slack of that TV coming off the wall so that we can hang it up there and have room for cables in the back. Because one thing you'll find is if you have a electrical outlet that is anywhere in this void here, when this goes up against the wall, you can't get a cable in because you won't have the depth needed. Sometimes that means you just need to grab a clock plug. That is something you can grab from Lowe's Home Depot where the power outlet is actually recessed into the wall. But if you do need one of those clock plugs, check that on the subscription. We're gonna link one down there for you so you can grab one if you need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just thread this in here and just get this started. And what I'm doing is randomly placing this bracket centered on this TV. My goal is to have it centered, but I didn't do any crazy math to make sure. But as I look at it right now, I can already see with the screw hole I'm in, the bottom hole doesn't fit in the slot, so I'm gonna have to move it up one more. So right now, uh, I'm actually taking out this little set screw uh, or security screw, whatever you wanna call it. This later will be used so that when this entire thing hangs on the bracket that's gonna be mounted to the wall, you can run this screw up and it's gonna tuck behind the bracket so that you can't just take this off the wall. There for security or so that someone can't easily come up and bump it, but this TV weighs enough so that you're not gonna bump it off the wall. Someone would have to pull harder if they wanted to steal it off the wall. Just like this previous bracket here, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and throw it on. Obviously, you notice this is in the box. I purposely do that. I like dealing with this TV while it's standing up, and most of these boxes are built such that you can pull them off and leave the base in there with all the little styrofoam so it's supported. I do usually keep it to a wall or lean against the couch or something soft if you have it, because if you bump this, like you could knock it over, but it is decently sturdy. Just like with the last one, I went ahead and put these spacers on the back side of this. One thing I haven't mentioned, this, if you're a tool guy, you already know these things, but I use a drill. I try to never use a screwdriver just out of laziness or just for the sake of efficiency. But if you're running these screws in here, you gotta be very careful not to cross thread stuff in that TV or just a wall plate, doesn't matter what it is. Be careful not to cross thread things. Another thing is you don't want to over tighten it, right? If I'm not mistaken, the little uh, recessed nuts that are inside of this TV probably just press fit into some kind of board. And if you over tighten this, you'll pop them out and they'll start free spinning. And then they're basically doing no good whatsoever. At that point, you may not be able to even hang this down on the wall. So be careful. I use DeWalt's always, but I will typically set my clutch on like number eight, which is kind of a arbitrary number, but just something I know is not too overly tight that's gonna do this. Done about a million TVs and I have not messed one up um, on that setting yet. So again, this little security screw or set screw, whatever the hell you wanna call it, is actually in my way. I'm just gonna remove it real quick so that I can get this in here. I don't know if you guys notice this on the last one, but when I put these in here, I do pull these brackets up as much as I can before I actually tighten them down because the TV is going to hang on the wall. And so I don't want to pull it down on this. I want to push up on it because that's the force it's going to be going. But it's also doing that because there's, as you can see, a little bit of slack in here. And so if, as long as I pull it up and do the same thing with both of them, 
they should be pretty close. Now in the end, what you'll notice is that with just that little bit of play there, even if you get this bracket perfectly level, you have a chance this won't be level. We can deal with that though. All right, uh, we got that bracket on there. We're gonna go ahead and set the security or put the security screw back in here. All right, and now one thing I always do is I like to take this bracket and put it in the TV. Now I might have to screw one of these screws to kind of hold it in place, but I do this because then I can reference the top or bottom if for some reason you had this out of the box and that was easier for you. But for me, it's the top of the TV and reference this bracket because then I know what my offset is. Once we get to the wall, I know where this bracket needs to go if I want it mounted at a specific height. With this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten one of these set screws just so this will hold in place. And then I'm gonna grab a level and a measuring tape just to get a rough estimate of how much this is set back off that top of the TV. I've only got one of these screws. I'm just gonna kind of push up and hold this at the top here. But what I'm looking for is basically my distance from the top of this TV to the top of this bracket. Now, none of this has to be perfect, but like I said, it's just to get a rough estimate of how far we're off of this bracket from the top of the TV. So that's roughly 11 inches. With that info, we're gonna take the height of the TV and we are going to kind of reference the wall over here, see where it fits right, and then from where that top will be, we'll measure down 11 inches, and that's where the top of this guy's gonna be. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna grab the height of this TV, and then I'm going to just stretch my measuring tape out, say that's the height, and then kind of get a rough up and down that wall where we think it's gonna look best. From there, I'll then find my center mark left and right on that wall, and we will get our center hole for this mount, and then just start trying to look for a stud. All right, so the height of the TV is 32 and a half inches. Don't forget that. All right, so those are my notes so that, you know, if I forget, I won't forget. 11 inches from the top of the TV to the top of that bracket and 32 and a half inches for the height of the TV, even though I wrote wide, but that's what I meant. So this is just one way of doing it. Generally speaking, this is enough for me. I can just hold this to the wall and go, that's gonna be the height of the TV. And from there, we're just trying to define how much space looks good above or below. Honestly, anywhere from here probably up towards there. Come down too low and it might get in the way, but we have a nice little range here. All right, so one way of kind of helping us decide where we're gonna go there is just what's possible. So we have a 11 inches from the top of the TV to the top of this mount. One way to help this is either we need to have this bracket below these outlets or above these outlets. If it's gonna be in the way in some way, shape, and form, how can we you know, work around that? Well, this is an additional almost eight inches tall. So if the top is going to be 11 inches above that, then we know we need the top 19 inches or 19 inches above this before this bracket will clear like this. So what does that look like? As long as we mount the TV in this void here, then that means I can get that bracket above this. And that spot looks good to me. The alternative was to say, oh, okay, all right, well, we know we have 11 inches between the top of the TV and the top of this bracket. So if this bracket is going to be below these things, that means that we could only have roughly 11 inches above it. So go to 32 and a half again. So that means the TV would have to be this low. Well, that's definitely too low, right? What else could be done? You're telling me those are the only two options? No, 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 that is the only two options if we don't move the brackets on the back of the TV. However, there's only so much play on the brackets on the back of the TV. The truth is we are actually limited by where these outlets are. In a really bad case, where these things don't line up, if you didn't plan properly, you could try modifying this bracket, cutting this bracket apart in some way, shape, and form. And there are brackets that have open area, but it would be nice just to plan ahead and then make that thing work like it's supposed to. In this scenario, we've kind of got that worked out for us where like I said, as long as we have 19 inches above these outlets, this bracket should clear and the bottom of the TV should sit roughly right there. So we're gonna go for that. Okay, so that's roughly our height right there. I'm gonna measure the width of this wall and try to find center left to right. One thing about center is that I like to try to do everything as if it's absolute center and it has to be. What I mean by that? Well, this bracket, I can have it off an inch or two either direction and the brackets on the back of this TV are still gonna line up with it, right? So we have a decent amount of play. That's necessary if we don't hit a stud here. We might have to move it to one side or the other a little bit to catch another stud, but just be aware you don't have to be perfect with this bracket because it's gonna be covered and there's enough play on the back of the TV. So it's roughly 104 and a half, so 52 and a quarter should be about center. Okay, 
and that should be our center hole right there. What I'm gonna do is kinda hold the bracket up there, make sure everything I just said is actually still true, make sure it lines up with things, make sure we don't have to move it up a little bit, because I might have gotten just a touch, touch close there. And if everything's all good, throw a level on it, and then just kind of circle where our holes are, and we'll start searching for a stud. I'm sure those extra holes uh, or little dots I made there was just because this particular bracket doesn't have a center hole. Some of them do, so I can't exactly put it up there perfectly, but both these holes right here I just made should fit inside of these two things. So I'm gonna grab my level, try to make a straight line that I know where I'm at. And from there, like I said, start drilling and see if we can find a uh, stud. Okay, so I can tell you just by the feel of it, I hit some level of the stud there. And by that, I mean, we're in a commercial building right now and there's a chance they put backing in there for us, but I just felt the resistance of, of wood. So whether it's a, a stud or it's a piece of backing, either way, we hit something there. One thing I'll mention is that worst, worst case scenario, we hit nothing on this entire wall, which would be pretty difficult to do. Usually you're gonna hit at least one stud and just the width of this bracket is gonna span, you know, should span two stud cavities. If you cannot hit a stud, these guys right here are awesome. Like I said, I'll always wanna hit at least one stud, but you could put an entire 65 inch TV up with nothing but these. If you did, I'd probably put more than four screws in the wall like I would typically would if I'm hitting the two studs. But you know, <clears throat> these new toggler bolts are awesome. They're a lot easier to deal with than the old school little springy ones. You don't have to drill as big of a hole. They're just all around better. So we use them all the time. All right, so that second hole right there just hit. Stud again. There's no way that we have a stud that close to each other. So quite confident we've got some backing here. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the correct size pilot bit. I just put a teeny tiny bit on there trying to search for studs because if I didn't find one, I don't wanna drill a big hole. And at the end of the day, this bracket's gonna cover all that. So no big deal if I had hit nothing. All right, so <clears throat> this hole to the right here, I can tell I'm right on the edge of a stud or right on the edge of a nail in that stud or in that backing. And so my pilot hole went through just fine, but when I put a bigger bit on there, it started creeping to the right, which means it's most likely kind of chasing off the edge of a stud. So I'll probably just drill another hole a little further over one way or another. I just wanna go ahead and throw the bracket up there because literally just one hole will be good enough to throw that bracket up there. We'll tighten down one screw or one lag screw, and then we'll level it and we'll go ahead and draw out our rest of our holes. All right, so uh, I threw that on clutch setting 10, just in case anyone who cares about that. Again, I'm not trying to go too tight. If I go too tight, what you'll see is you'll start pulling this bracket into the wall such that you will flush out any nail heads that you know might not have been set uh, all that great and you end up with all these little rosebuds. So you don't want that. I may tighten it down a little more in a second, but I'll probably do the final tightening by hand just so I kind of have a feel for where it's at. So that's pretty level right there. As you can see, I'm just gonna mark some of these holes, go wide, and uh, before I start hitting with the drill bit, uh, because if I bump this, I don't wanna have to keep re-leveling it. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill a couple more pilot bits here and see if we can find where we have backing or studs in this wall. And where we find them, we'll go ahead and hit it with some lags. All right, so a couple of those holes I'm pretty sure, or maybe they just hit a metal stud and didn't hit the backing, but um, this hole and this hole, they, they pop through when I ran them through. Just from experience, I can tell you that it's not gonna be in something meaty. You really only need four screws in here. I'm gonna end up having, what, one, two, three, four, so we're good to go, but I'll pop another one here in case I've got an extra lag screw. We'll use it. All right, so now we went ahead and drilled all those pilot holes. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed here, but I'm using the actual bit that I needed to use. I was using a teeny tiny bit at first, as I mentioned on the first go around. I'm really just trying to pop holes to see if I can find backing. And once I do, I'll go ahead and drill the right size hole, which in this case is a 732 inch bit. If you check your instructions, they'll tell you the right bit to use based on the size of the lag screws they gave you.
we went ahead and put that in there. You might have seen me tweak it on that a little bit because I might not have said it, but no matter what you do, that thing always ends up being off just a tad, even though you leveled it out. So I kind of had to do caddy cornered screws, tighten them first so that I get everything nice and flush. And if you want to come in here and check that bubble, you'll see that it's pretty dang close to center. And I say that because it may be off by what we'll see uh, in the end if it's off, but we might be able to slide a sheet of paper underneath the bracket to get that height perfect if we need to, but it's probably gonna be okay. All right, so we actually did talk to the contractor here and he did confirm they did put backing in this wall, tons and tons of backing from the sound of it. I think he said they put a four by four sheet of plywood backing this. So super easy to hit a stud when you have backing in the wall. If you're in a home just doing this in a residential type of scenario, probably won't be that lucky. All right, I'm gonna grab some help from Sean here and see if we can throw this TV up and get a look for it, uh, look at it, make sure that it looks good from a level. From there, we'll pull it back off the wall, connect everything up and call it done. All right, so we threw the TV up there and it is very, very close. As I mentioned before, I might actually cheat a little bit, slide a piece of paper in between the bracket on the back of the TV and the bracket on the wall, just to give me a little bit, because if you go pulling that apart and try to take screws loose and adjust it, I'm looking for literally a millimeter difference. And if I go doing all that, the chances are I'll get three millimeters and that's not what I'm looking for. So we'll go ahead and pull this off the wall and get ready for all the connections on the back, throw it back up there and center it and slide the little piece of paper underneath there if we need to, and we'll call it a day. We've got the power cable plugged in. We have an HDMI cable plugged in the back of the TV kind of dangling off in this ethernet. I'm basically staging cables because it's a pain in the butt to try to connect everything once you're holding something in the air. And it's pretty difficult to connect everything if it's fully mounted. So this is almost always a two person job unless you've got like a 30 inch TV or something like that. Sean and I are gonna lift this up, kind of hook the top, have the bottom hung out so we can plug everything in that we're planning to plug in because we have a Comcast cable box coming at a later time that's probably gonna go into this end and the HDMI cable hanging off the back of the TV is gonna go into the box as well. Hopefully they can get to all this stuff without us pulling this TV back off the wall just to avoid us dealing with that. But we'll see. All right, Sean, let's throw it up on the wall real quick. All right, the last thing we gotta do is grab a measuring tape and just kind of check to see if this TV is centered on the wall. M not. Might have to slide it left or right a tad bit. Oh yeah, it's gonna slide to the right four inches. All right, awesome. In order to get these security screws, we're gonna have to grab a long Allen key. So we're not gonna be able to tighten these today. We just don't have very much slack up in there. So for now, we're basically good to go. Obviously, we still have some cables hanging down. <clears throat> Whenever we get our Comcast box in here, we'll tidy all the stuff up, hang it up in there, and it's gonna look just like that. But for now, we are as done as we can be. Just because we might have to pull this off the wall again, we'll go ahead and leave all those little covers and protection little labels on there, just for giggles. We'll go ahead and leave this box here too, just in case we have to take it down and put it back up, but fire it on and see what we get. Oh, sweet, I was gonna say, there's a chance the electricians could have the breaker off, but no, we're good to go. All right guys, so we're all finished. If you are looking for a mount, or TV for that matter, you know, look in the description to see what we got here. Also feel free to drop us a comment with any questions that you may have or any comment that you may have as to how you may have done things differently. Check out our blog post. We have a full write-up on how to do this. That in combination with this video should get you everything you need on mounting your first TV. Feel free to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.